Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today we're going to talk all about mulch. As we begin putting our plants in for spring, and uh, that's what we did in our last video, uh, I want to get this bare soil covered up. There are several good reasons to use mulch in a garden. Um, first of all, uh, mulch is good at retaining moisture in the soil and it insulates the soil and helps to avoid all those temperature shifts that you might get if you know like at this time of year we get some cool weather a couple of fronts blow through um, and then the sun comes out and bakes the soil yeah it helps to insulate and retain moisture helps that evaporation not happen so quickly so retaining moisture <clears throat> it's a big deal uh, it also obviously suppresses weeds and that's my main interest here I want to suppress the weeds in this garden also, uh, it feeds the soil. Mulch, is, uh, as it breaks down, adds nutrition to the soil, and that's what you want. You want healthy, well-fed soil to grow healthy plants. So, uh, yeah, those are the, those, those are the chief uh, benefits of mulching. Uh, there are other benefits as well, but uh, that, those are the three that I like to harp on. Uh, bare soil, no good in my garden, although some, some years I've had bare soil. If you have bare soil, I suggest you get a scuffle hoe, or a small little weeding hoe and uh, stay on top of that weeding man you got to get those weeds out under control if you've got bare soil now i've talked about mulch in the past i've got videos that talk about all the different kinds of mulch you can use uh, but today i'm going to show you how i'm going to suppress weeds especially with mulch made of cardboard and with hardwood shredded hardwood mulch on top uh, cardboard is a very wonderful thing to use in the garden it feeds the soil the earthworms love it and it really does help to suppress weeds. If you mulch and you don't mulch real, real heavy um, with a traditional mulch like hardwood mulch, um, those weeds can still find their way through and come up in your garden over time. It does suppress them, especially if you use like a, a three inch layer of hardwood mulch. That's, that's the best mulch I've ever found. I've made my own mulch out of grass clippings, dried grass clippings mixed with oak leaves. That's a very good mulch too. Uh, the grass clippings are tight enough to suppress weeds and still let water pass through. Um, the oak leaves keep the grass clippings from forming that dense mat that doesn't let anything penetrate. So if you're going to use grass clippings, I suggest you mix them with leaves. Uh, the problem with that is high winds can blow some of that stuff away, while this uh, shredded wood mulch doesn't seem to, to move. And the good thing about shredded hardwood mulch is that it lasts for years. You just rake it back from where you used it last year and you plant something new and rake it back on um, if, if I'm making sense. You could just move it around your garden and put throw it on a tarp while you replant your garden between seasons and it lasts and lasts. I've got three years out of hardwood mulch and uh, yeah, it, it tends to diminish as it rots and that feeds the soil. So there's nothing bad about hardwood mulch in my opinion. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to put some cardboard down today and just right on top of the soil and we're going to cover it with some hardwood mulch to make it not look like a, a dump and uh, yeah let's get to work any old cardboard will do i like these amazon boxes because well you order from amazon and you get a free box um, a lot of people are going to say to take all the stickers and the tape off try to get most of that off as you can, as much as you can this packing tape with these uh, strings in them kind of annoying but you know not the end of the world if you leave a few pieces on there. Folks will also tell you to take off these kinds of uh, stickers, these glossy stickers. I don't worry about that. They rot too. Uh, and there's a little glue on there. You know, what are you going to do? You're going to labor all day to get all that off? No, I don't have time for that. They go right in the garden. They, they rot down too. Get you a box cutter. This is a cheap box cutter. I got a better one coming. Uh, but a box cutter does wonders on cutting these into pieces you can deal with. I like to use smaller pieces of cardboard rather than putting whole sheets down. I like smaller pieces of cardboard and I overlap them so that there's gaps so that when it rains the water can easily penetrate. Um, it's just one more easy way to uh, you know, make sure your water is, uh, your, your garden is getting irrigated. Um, I do leave a gap around my plants and I overlap these and uh, then we're going to put some, some uh, hardwood mulch to keep them in place, keep it from blowing away. And, like I said, keep it looking better. So, I'm going to cut some pieces here. Doesn't have to be pretty. 
I'm bringing my cardboard all the way out to the edge of my brick and that's because I want to suppress weed growth in these holes because I get a lot of weeds growing in there if I'm not planting something on, on purpose in there. If I bring this all the way out to the edge, it will suppress the weeds in these holes. And if I want to plant here, I'll just come and cut the section out. Uh, I usually plant pollinator attractors in these holes. And, uh, you know, it's a good, good extra gardening space if you have these bricks. So I'm going to cover it all the way out to the edge. And I might need to move this label a little bit. Like I said, I like to overlap them a little bit. Now, I've got areas over here, down here and over where my camera is, that I'm going to direct sow. So I'm not going to mulch over that until my um, direct sown seeds emerge. I'll probably direct sow some seeds right in here as well, some herbs. So we're just going to get around these tomato plants with this mulch, and we will stop short of covering this entire area. I've even got this kind of cardboard. If you can see, this is a uh, like a hexagonal cell cardboard. This is probably not going to last as long as this other cardboard, but it's a handy size sheet. Might as well use it. for mulch. I'm bringing the mulch all the way out to the edge just so it looks better. And you don't need that much mulch on cardboard since the cardboard itself is acting like a mulch. This mulch will actually help to break down that cardboard from the top as the earthworms help to break it down from the bottom. So you've got a win-win going on here. water it in real well get that uh, cardboard limbered up so it will settle the wetter it gets the more it conforms to the soil and that's what we want it's going to take a while to get through all that mulch after you water a little bit reach down and see how far it's going that mulch retains a lot of moisture. I'm especially interested to see how this cardboard will suppress weed growth in the cells of my concrete blocks. I know that weeds will try to come out the edge and I'll just weed whack those down with the weed trimmer. But I hope it suppresses the majority of the weeds. Especially the nuts edge. We did this uh, whole bed, all three beds, we hand dug them this past uh, end of summer. We went through here and dug up all the soil and took all the nuts edge roots out that we could find. But you know we missed some. And that's the one I'm most interested in suppressing. Doesn't look too bad, does it? I think it looks good. And once those plants get big, yeah, it'll be nice. The only thing I don't like is the edge, but you know. What are you going to do? Uh, that edge will get ragged as the, as the spring and summer go by. And I weed whack the, the grass there. But you know what? It's mostly organic. And our tomatoes are going to love it. Now you might say I've got my tomatoes spaced really far apart from each other. And that's on purpose. I have learned over the years... Of growing tomatoes that if you give them about that much space three to four feet between your plants they do much better they stay healthy they produce more um, you put them all close together and they get diseased they're competing with one another they're just not as healthy I've had plants spaced three across in rows that were you know a foot or two feet you know close to each other and and that just didn't work that was not a bright gardener back then. I tried it, I learned, 
now I like the wide spacing. These plants are going to fill that space. They'll be touching one another by the height of spring. Even this little pipsqueak right here. While I've got you here, how about a single seed challenge update? This is my uh, hot Portugal chili pepper. And it's struggling because, well, I hardened it off maybe a little early. We had some inclement weather. It's been beat down a bit. It's been wind whipped, but it's living. The leaves look healthy. And yeah, so far, so good. Single seed challenge. I'm going to let it get a little bit bigger in this pot. Maybe something, you know, like so. And then I'm going to plant it out into its own container and see how we do. So there it is, single seed challenge update. This was planted on February the 8th. Today is March the 16th. So about a month and a week. Should be a little bit bigger, huh? But it's growing. Makes me happy. Here's a Phoebe update. Phoebe's moving around really, really well. And you can see she's uh, still recovering because she has to be on a leash even in her own backyard. Isn't that sad? And this is why she has to be on a leash because right on the other side of this fence there's another dog. And she will go crazy if that dog is out here and risk injuring her surgery site. So we have to wait until we have a checkup. Hey, Phoebe, say hello to everybody. Say hello. We have to wait till we have our final surgery checkup in about a week and then perhaps she'll be able to come off her leash. But until then, this is our life. I'm going to go out four or five times a day on the leash just so I can check her if she wants to run. We have to inspect all the places and sniff all the things, huh? Got to sniff the compost. That, by the way, is my other compost pile. Yard waste and leaves. What you doing? What you smelling, huh? Where are we going? Yeah, she kind of lost her corgi butt. They shaved her down a bit. It'll grow back. Yeah, don't mind the junk back here. We're doing a home renovation. What you sniffing? Huh? What you sniff? Is it a squirrel? <laughs> there it is. Easy to mulch your garden and suppress weeds, retain moisture with a little bit of mulch and some free cardboard. So give it a try. Let me know how you mulch. Let me know your secrets to mulching. It sure beats an expensive roll of weed cloth, which I actually do have hiding over there on the porch. But I want to do this so that I can feed that soil, feed the worms, and that cardboard will break up over time. And if I need to plant directly in there or make a hole in it to plant something, that's easy too. Just move it around, cut it, you can do whatever you want with it. So yeah, cardboard. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I hope my channel has been useful and the information that you can glean here is uh, of use to you. If you find our content worthwhile, I hope we've earned your subscription. Please like us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and we will talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.